So you've decided to get a Tesla Model Y, but you're not quite sure on all the options. Although Tesla is a pretty simple ordering process and there's very limited options to select, there's still a lot to consider. Now the first and most obvious one is, do I get a long range or do I get the performance? The jump between the long range and the performance is $11,000. The long range all wheel drive comes in at $49,990. The performance on the other hand comes in at 60,990. Now the long range is going to get you 326 miles of rated range and a zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. More on that later. The performance model on the other hand is going to give you 303 miles of rated range and a zero to 60 in a blisteringly fast 3.5 seconds. So obviously this is all up to personal preference on if you need or really desire to have the fastest Tesla Model Y available. At three and a half seconds, there's not a lot of cars on the road today that are faster than that. So it's gonna be very rare that you're ever gonna have an issue passing or being passed by somebody else. So if you're into the thrill and you have the money to spend, go ahead and get the performance. But just do note that although you get these really beautiful 21 inch wheels, it comes with the smallest sidewall I've ever seen on a production car. It's also gonna come with a lower suspension, which is going to be a little bit more rough of a ride, but you're also going to get performance brakes. That suspension combined with those brakes and those super grippy tires that it has are gonna give you fantastic performance straight out of the box. So weigh those options carefully. I wouldn't be as concerned about range because you're only giving up 23 miles of range. Now I would take 23 miles more range any day of the week, of course, and that is a lot but you're not sacrificing too much to have that much more performance. Now that said, there is a compromise to be had here. If you get the long range all wheel drive, after you take delivery, you do have the option to add an acceleration boost. The acceleration boost is $2,000 and it is going to reduce your zero to 60 time from 4.8 seconds all the way down to 4.2 seconds. That's nearly four seconds and that is super fast. That is not as fast as the performance and seven tenths of a second that's a lot. So there's still a big difference between the performance and the long range all wheel drive with the acceleration boost, but it is a lot closer. So something to really think about, would $2,000 and 4.2 seconds get you close enough that you could save an additional $9,000 versus the performance? Completely up to you. All right, so now that you've selected long range or the performance, you've gotta pick a color. Of course, the white is the standard color, and there's no additional charge for that. If you add any of the other colors, you are going to pay $1,000 to $2,000 each. So you can upgrade the exterior to black, midnight silver metallic, deep blue, or red. And those options are going to be $1,000. Now, if you go for the red, it's going to be $2,000. Now, just be aware, if you go with the standard white, it is a very good white, and I like the color a lot, however, it's not a perfect match on the bumpers. So if you're very nitpicky, just keep that in mind. You probably won't notice it though most of the time. That rear bumper mismatch used to be really bad and Tesla has made a lot of progress and it is now on an acceptable level in my opinion. So if that would bother you or you really like those other colors, just splurge, spend the extra thousand dollars and get the color you want. And if it's red, spend the extra $2,000. All right, so now it's time to select the wheels and you have two options. The car comes standard with these 19 inch Gemini wheels and they are a hubcap over an aluminum wheel, which is not terrible. It gives you flexibility of having a couple different looks. The hubcaps are meant to help with range on the highway. They're more aerodynamic, but you can remove those. I've seen plenty of people powder coat the wheels black and they look pretty good. They also come with a continental all season tire which is going to perform better if you're in a snowy region. It's not gonna be perfect, but it is going to be substantially better than the tires that come on the induction wheels. Now, the induction wheels are $2,000 and they look stunning. I love the induction wheels. I think they look fantastic. They match all the trim very well and it is a great look. That said, you're sacrificing sidewall size and you're going to have worse performance if you live in a snowy region. Now, when the pavement is dry, no issues at all. It actually has pretty good grip. Add any inclement weather and those tires are just not up to the task. So depending on your region and where you live, you may wanna consider passing on the induction wheels. And in my personal opinion, regardless of where you live, I recommend passing on those induction wheels. 
And here's why. If you get the Gemini wheels standard on the car, you can get either any aftermarket option out there or a takeoff set of induction wheels off of eBay. Now prices fluctuate and I keep an eye on these things over time. And I've generally seen $2,000 to $2,500 would get you a set of wheels with the tires on them. However, right now there's very limited options and none of them have the tires on it. So this could end up being more expensive than getting the induction wheels straight from the factory and having a second set. But here's the thing, by saving that $2,000, you can apply that then towards an aftermarket set or those takeoff induction wheels. Now you have for a little bit more investment than $2,000, you have two sets of wheels. You have a summer set of wheels and you have a winter set of wheels if that is appropriate for your region. Otherwise, you've got a set of wheels for when you go on road trips that should be a little bit more efficient. And then you have a set of wheels for around town. Completely up to you, but I highly recommend getting the Gemini wheels and then get a second set of wheels and tires for the other seasons. Now the next option that you have is a hitch. This hitch is $1,000 and don't worry, you can order this after the fact and it'll be installed at your local service center. But if you do this, it'll be $1,200 after the fact. So it's gonna be $200 more if you wait to do this later. Here's my recommendation on the hitch. If you're going to be towing anything like a trailer, uh, pulling anything behind the vehicle, I highly, highly, highly recommend spending the $1,000 and getting the Tesla trailer hitch. The reason is you're gonna get tow mode and you're not gonna have issues with warranty down the road. If you are not planning on towing anything, save yourself quite a bit of money and get one of the aftermarket options. For about $300, $400, there are a number of options out there that are perfect for this application. If you're just gonna be mounting bikes to the back or maybe a cargo carrier, that is a much more reasonable approach. You can do this on your own. It's not that hard to install these things, but there are also local providers that can install these for you as well. All right, so now my favorite part of setting up your car. You have two options for interior. Of course, the standard black interior. For $1,000, you can upgrade to the partially white interior. This white interior looks amazing, and I totally get this is personal preference. So if you don't like the white, it doesn't matter, just get the black. But if you like the white as much as I do, Here's what I'm going to say. We chose black interior because we have young kids and we were worried about the white interior holding up. However, I've seen countless people share updates on their white interior and I have yet to see anybody that has any problems maintaining that white interior, even with kids. I've heard from a number of subscribers at this point who took the plunge and went with the white interior and are very happy that they did. I'm very jealous, I wish we would have done it, on our next Tesla, we will be getting the white interior because I personally think it looks amazing. If you like white interior, I say go for it. Spend the extra thousand dollars, even if that's the only option you add, get that white interior first. I think it looks amazing. Okay, and for the next option, you can have either a five seat interior or a seven seat interior. The seven seat interior is $3,000 and you can only add it to the long range all wheel drive option. You cannot add a seven seat configuration to the performance model. So that seven seat configuration, there are plenty of videos out there, including our own. I'll post the link up here showing you what it's like in the back of the seven seat Model Y. It's very tight back there. It is doable for a lot of applications and for $3,000 to have the flexibility, it's kind of nice. That said, don't kid yourself, you're not going to be able to fit large adults in the back of this car. I'm only 5'6", and I would not feel comfortable sitting back there. And the reason isn't because I couldn't fit back there, but it's to fit back there. My head was right up against the glass. And then there's this large trim piece right at my forehead. If you have watched any reviews about the Model Y, you know it's not the most plush ride on the road. So bumps and things like that, they're gonna throw that person in the back seat, up a little bit, forward a little bit, around a little bit. And if they're already that close to the glass and the trim, they're going to make contact several times. So as long as your intent is for small children in the back, I think go for it. You shouldn't have any issues. This third row does have a latch for a high back booster seat in the back of the seat. So you could put a high back back there. You're not going to be able to fit a very large car seat back there. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're more in the toddler age and older to be considering that third row. 
Okay, and then finally, it's the most controversial option at Tesla, and that of course is full self-driving. For $10,000, you're going to get navigate on autopilot, auto lane change, auto park, summon, traffic light and stop sign control, and then later, they'll be coming with auto steer on city streets. So here's the thing, I do not have full self-driving and I had the option at $7,000. And at $7,000, I did not think it was worth it. So at $10,000, I still say it's not worth it. This is my personal opinion. If you are on the highway frequently, you may wanna consider it. It is a very large investment though, and keep that in mind. When you pay that $10,000, you're going to have limited features at this time. You're still going to have to drive the car like normal. You can engage autopilot. It can change lanes on the highway for you, but it is a limited suite of features at this point in time. Now, there's a lot going on with the beta program and they're working to expand on those options that are currently functioning. So this suite of features is continuing to expand and that will eventually be available. But this has always been the crux with full self-driving. When will it be available? I hope that it'll be available sometime this year, but we're yet to see that happen. There is a lot of progress being made. Make your own decision on this. Don't let anybody else influence your decision on full self-driving. I want to thank the sponsor of this episode, Phantom Wallet, who offers premium wallet designs made of an aluminum chassis with options of wood, leather, and carbon fiber finishes that suits everyone's unique style. Grab the card you need with a quick flip of the lever. RFID and NFC protection is built in, ensuring a safe and secure alternative to traditional options. So it wasn't that long ago that standard range was an option as well. And we had it for several weeks before it went away altogether. The price dropped by 2000 bucks and then a couple days later it was gone forever. The standard range came in at 39,990 after a price drop. Now it gave you 244 miles of range and a 5.3 zero to 60 time. The standard range was a fantastic option for a lot of people. It was significantly less. It was $10,000 less than the long range model. And if you're not gonna be doing long frequent highway commutes or road trips, it was a fantastic value. It was only a little bit more than the Model 3. At this point, thanks to another price increase on the Model 3 just the other day, it was only $2,000 more than the Model 3 standard range plus. And you got the full premium interior. The only thing it was really lacking was that second motor and having premium connectivity for a year for free. Big deal, it's $9.99 a month. So hopefully the standard range does come back in some form very soon. My thought is they're waiting for the new battery cells to give it enough range for Elon's standard of what he thinks is minimum acceptable range. So I think over 250 miles is what they're waiting for and it might come back at that point. And now for the rest of you who are still kind of undecided on the fence, the 4680 battery cells are coming. It is still going to be some time. At some point this year, Gigafactory Berlin should be open and it is supposed to feature the very first Model Ys with the new batteries. Elon Musk did state he's going to make it prove itself out for 18 to 24 months over there before bringing it to the US. Now, Elon Musk has a history of saying things and completely changing whatever it was he said multiple times. So take that with a grain of salt. But I think we're still a year to two out on those new battery cells. So between now and then, it's still a good time to buy, but do be aware those battery cells are coming eventually. I think that that's still two years away personally, and once they do come out, the demand is gonna be strong and it's gonna take some time to get a delivery of a Model Y with the new battery cells. Now, when those battery cells do come out, we think we're gonna have quite a bit more range, a better price, longer life on those batteries, and on and on. There's a lot of benefits that come with those batteries and we're very excited to see that. Okay, so you've made your final decisions and you know what you're gonna get. There are two things you have to, have to, have to get regardless of where you live. You need to get mud flaps and you need to get PPF. The mud flaps are 40 bucks on Tesla's website and do not be concerned if you don't like them. There are finally multiple aftermarket options available that look a lot better and include all four corners instead of just the front two that Tesla has. There's a video linked above that'll show you the Tesla's version of these mud flaps, how they go on, they're super easy, and you can get an idea of what they look like. In addition, you need to get PPF. 
these PPF covers from Tesla are $50, which is kind of expensive for what you're getting, but it is a must have. These corners of my car have been absolutely obliterated by road debris, salt, rocks, everything. Get these on early on as quick as possible. Mud flaps and these corners protect them because that paint is very fragile in this area and it's extremely exposed to the elements. So there you have it. This is my buyer's guide to the Tesla Model Y. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, of course, give it a big thumbs up. It really helps. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time.